The health and medical information provided during this webinar, as well as the questions and responses from the webinar providers, are solely for informational purposes. This content is not intended to take the place of advice or treatment from health professionals. Nothing presented in the webinar is intended to be used for medical evaluation, diagnosis, or treatment. It is not intended to substitute for your relationships with your own healthcare and pharmaceutical providers. Always seek the advice of your healthcare provider before beginning any new treatment or if you have questions regarding a medical condition. There's lots of stuff to talk about, so let's get started. And we'll start with the erection process and how erections work. So we really didn't understand how erectile uh, function worked until about the mid 80s or so. It's a really complicated, intricate process with a lot of steps involved. The first step is that the nerves that surround the penis become active due to stimulus from the brain. So for example, when you hear something sexy or you see something sexy, smell something sexy, et cetera, these nerves activate uh, the penis itself. And what that does is force the muscles that surround the arteries in the penis to relax. These arteries are the two central arteries located in those two chambers in the penis that you see there. And when they relax, they pump more blood into the penis and that makes the penis erect, right? So we go from the flaccid state to the erect state. What happens is the blood pushes in through those arteries and those chambers in the penis are filled with spongy tissue and that spongy tissue expands. And what that expansion does is it pinches the vein shut so the blood stays in the penis. So it's really like a hydraulic effect. Blood goes in, penis tissue expands and blood stays in. And when that blood stays in, you have an erection. So we're gonna talk about intracavernosal injection therapy, which is really the backbone of any serious male sexual health practice, right? This is, I, I do a lot of penile implant surgery, I do a lot of vacuum erection device prescriptions, but I prescribe a ton of intracavernosal injection uh, for patients. So we're gonna talk about the medication itself, we're gonna talk, talk about dosing, we're gonna talk about syringes, all those things. So how do these medications work? What they do is they increase blood flow into the penis to help you maintain an erection that's suitable for sexual activity. Essentially what they do is there's a variety of chemicals. There are four drugs in these potential mixtures that we have. And what these drugs do is push blood down those two arteries and really inspire blood flow into the penis that then again causes penis expansion and sealing the veins shut to maintain erection. There are two to four medications available and those uh, combination options really determine what type of drug you have. So for example, Bimix, which is the lower range option for guys, is a mixture of papaverin and fentolamine, which are two of the separate drugs that are available in these combinations. Trimix, which is really the bulk of what most of these intracavernosal injection drug combinations are, is a mixture of papaverin and fentolamine, so bimix, as well as the additional drug alprostadol, which really does all the heavy lifting in trimix. It's really the most important of those three drugs. And in the various trimix combinations is the one that varies the most as far as how much alprostol is, is, is included in those mixtures. Quad mix is trimix with atropine, which is an additional drug that does additional more work to this process and helps a little bit more as well. So these formulations that you see here are MenMD's proprietary formulations for these drugs, and they work really, really well. I'm very, very happy to use them. I've been using them since I started my practice years ago. And to be perfectly honest with you, these drugs were actually pioneered in these combinations at the place where I trained in Boston, at Boston University at the Center for Sexual Medicine, where I did my residency. And so these combinations are ordered in the number, in the order of which they were discovered. So not so much in the order of which they are uh, strength-wise, which would be sensible, but rather in the order they were discovered, which is why there's some weird combinations. Like for example, how mix number five is stronger than mix number 14. You would think that mix number 14 would be stronger, but it's not. So the bimix formulations, uh, range from strongest to weakest as Bimix 3, Bimix 4, Bimix uh, 3, 2, or 32, excuse me, and Bimix 10. And what those really vary are the first number is the uh, papaverin concentration, and the second number is the fentolamine concentration. So really the fentolamine doesn't go much above 4 milligrams, and the papaverin concentration goes from 15 to 30 milligrams. That's Bimix in a nutshell. Pretty simple stuff. Trimix formulations are a little more complicated because you're adding the extra ingredient uh, of alprostadol, which is again, the most important drug in that combination. Trimix is really what the standard backbone of this kind of care is. It's very, very important stuff. Standard Trimix dosings range from mix number five, which is what most people start off at, to mix number 16, which is 
uh, rocket fuel. Very, very strong stuff, very, very potent uh, combination. Those are the standard strengths. We also have lower strengths trimix for guys who need something that's somewhere between bimix and standard trimix. Those lower combinations really have lower concentrations of alprostadil, which is the first drug measured in micrograms, which is abbreviated as MCG. And the other two drugs in those listings are papaverin and fentolamine, respectively. So, for example, Trimix 14 is 2.5 micrograms of alprostadil. Trimix 12 is 10 micrograms of alprostadil, so they range in order of increasing strength. The standard trimixes, most people start off at 10 microgram alprostadil trimix, which is really, again, the standard across the industry. Uh, for guys who need a little bit more than that, we have trimix number eight, which is double the strength. For guys who need even more, there is trimix number uh, 15 or number nine. I tend to focus more on number nine. Uh, which are quadruple the strength of trimix number five. For guys near a little bit more than number nine, but not quite number 16, we have trimix number 13, which is 60 micrograms of prostyl trimix. And then the big boy, the big daddy, is trimix number 16, which is 100 micrograms of prostyl trimix. Very, very strong stuff. Again, the concentrations of the other drugs don't really vary. Fentolamine varies from one milligram to six milligrams in these concentrations. And the papaverin, which is the middle number, really stays pretty steady at about 30 milligrams throughout all of those trimix uh, ranges. Quad mix, as we talked about, is the addition of atropine. So a little bit more of a different drug. And the atropine is measured again in micrograms. So in quad mix number one, you have what is trimix number 16 plus 10 micrograms of atropine, which is also very helpful in making this process work better. Quad mix two is twice as strong as trimix number 16 and also has uh, more atropine in it as well. So lots of additional stuff there. Okay, this is where it gets a little technical and complicated, so please bear with me on this. This stuff is fun for me, but for patients can seem confusing at first. So these, inject these medications are injected into the penis using a very, very, very small needle. This needle has two caps. One is the needle part right here. As you can see right there, I'll put up the camera, very, very tiny little needle. And then on the back end, you have another cap, and that cap, is for the plunger, which is how you pull the medication into the syringe and get the medication out of the syringe. Very simple stuff. A lot of my guys on Trimix are guys who are diabetics and inject insulin. So this process is really familiar to them. and makes a lot of sense. A lot of my guys are also guys who have no previous familiarity with needles at all. And so we're doing a lot of time teaching during this process. And you really, if you have questions, you should definitely ask your urologist for as much help as you can with this process. That said, MenMD has an excellent customer service program where they have an, an injection teaching nurse who is very, very good at walking you through these processes very, very clearly. So again, the needle is this thing right here on the top. The syringe is generally described as the whole thing, particularly this part with the numbers on it. And there are printed numbers on there, which are hard to see on this little tiny one. So I got a little bit of a bigger one here, but this is a one milliliter syringe which has more obvious numbers listed on it right there. The physician is really responsible for picking the right needles and sizes for you. And a lot of this is really an art form. It really depends on what the physician feels comfortable with, what we're used to patients using, what we were trained on patients to use, and how we train patients to use these devices. But for the most part, the syringe I have right here is pretty similar to the one you see in the picture. Okay, so technical stuff here that's important. The syringe, as you can see here, has a bunch of different types of measurements on it just to make everybody as confused as possible. But to be more clear about this, this is a one milliliter syringe. Of course, in America, we don't use the metric system, but a milliliter is one ml. It's very simple. We don't have this in our standard imperial measurements. So a milliliter is one milliliter, which is also coincidentally happens to be one cubic centimeter. So your physician might say this is a one cc syringe or a one milliliter syringe. It's the same thing either way. But of course, there's some extra confusion in this process. To be even more confusing and technical, these syringes are typically used to dose insulin, which diabetics use to treat their diabetes. And insulin is dosed in units, right? Not in milliliters. That's a lot if you dose it in milliliters. So a 1 ml syringe has 100 little tiny notches. You can see them uh, right here, little tiny notches. And those are units. So 100 units for a one milliliter syringe versus uh, 30 units for a 0 0.3 milliliter syringe. I hope that makes sense. I can explain it again. 
100 units, 30 units. 1 ml, 0 0.3 ml. And in this uh, one milliliter syringe, we have it broken down into tenths of a milliliter, which is, of course, even more confusing. So I try, for guys who have an understanding of insulin dosing or diabetics, I say, inject 20 units as your starting dose. But for guys who've never seen the syringe before, I say, go to the 0 0.2, which is this number right there on the syringe. 0 0.2 is 20 units. 0 0.3, 30 units. 0 0.4, 40 units. You get the picture from there. So there's lots of different gradations for this. And if you feel confused about this process, ask your doctor. The last thing you want to do is inject too much medication or contrarily, not enough medication. Neither one is particularly good. Okay, so your urologist will give you your first dose. The usual way this goes is they'll bring you into the office and they'll give you, let's say, for example, a test injection. And that test injection will give you one of three potential responses. An erection that is great and works really well and comes down uh, in a reasonable amount of time so that you don't have a prolonged erection, which is one of the problems with trimix, one of the risks of trimix. Um, or you would get a partial erection that's not quite good enough and for which a higher dose or a higher strength may be needed. You also get the possibility, which is very rare if, if this whole process goes well, the very rare possibility of a prolonged erection that won't go away. That condition is called priapism, and I can't emphasize enough that that is a medical emergency. So if you have a rock hard erection at four hours, you have to go to the emergency room. No question, right? I mean, you can test drive it first, but then you got to go to the ER and have them take care of it. What they typically do in that circumstance, what they should do in that circumstance, what we do in the office, is inject it with other medications to make that erection go away. It's a simple process. It's relatively comfortable. Um, but it's important because if you have a priapism that lasts too long, you could have severe changes inside your penis that are not great and make all this much, much worse. So typically, let's say you go to the visit with your, your urologist. He gives you a test dose or she gives you a test dose and you find something that works pretty well. And when you go home, you say, you call him back and say that lasted about two hours or so, which is great. That's ideal. That's what you want, right? Or less or more, depending on what you want, but not more than four hours, obviously. And then he sends you a prescription for that medication and he sends you a range of doses that you should go by. So let's say he says, start off at 20 units, which is this much right here. And you can go all the way to 40 units, but you should increase that in slow increments. So for example, you give yourself a shot at 20 units. It didn't work. What do you do next? Well, you stop what you're doing. And you don't give yourself more medication. You wait until the next night or the night after that. And you try again. A lot of times when guys are first doing this, I expect about a 50% failure rate in giving themselves injections if they're not used to this idea or if they're not familiar with medical stuff. So you try again, but don't double down and give yourself twice as much because all of a sudden, if you get it in the right spot that time, you have way too much medication, right? So you increase your dose gradually if you get a range of doses to work with from your urologist. Don't just dive into it and give yourself twice as much the next time because that could be a real problem. Also with these drugs, you can use them every other day right? So not every day, every other day, which typically is about four days a week, seven days in a week, every other day, four days a week. That's plenty of sex from my perspective, but you know, I have a kid, so not as often as it used to be. Most doctors say about three to four times a week is pretty much all you need. And if you go higher than that, you have an increased risk of forming scar tissue in your penis. So when I counsel guys on injections, I say there are three good things and three bad things. Three good things about injections, they're cheap, they're easy, and they're generally very effective. Three bad things. Number one, some guys have pain sometimes. Not very common. When it happens, you can adjust based on the various prescription options you have for men MD. Number two, the risk of priapism, which we talked about, which is not great and for which you need to seek emergency attention. But a careful, thoughtful urologist will hopefully prevent that from happening. And number three, these medications stop working as time. So some guys need to use higher and higher strengths as time goes by. Okay. When I see guys in my practice, I send them home with this awesome men md pamphlet which comes with this fabulous logo and picture on the front which is not really important but inside lots of very neat instructions right so i point my patients to this instruction page we go over it together which tells you how to do the injections, which is very very important and then i take them to the back which has the very same chart that you see on this slide right here and this chart is what my patients log and record and then bring back to me when they come back to their follow visit and tell me exactly how it went so what I'm looking for is a guy to be in the goal range, right? Which is an erection that's about 70 to 90% hard. 
You don't want too much harder than that and less than that. 60% or so is what you need to be able to penetrate with. So you want a seven to nine out of 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have them write down the date of use of the medication, how much they injected, which I give guys instructions on how, what, how much I want them to inject, the duration of the erection at its hardest, not overall, because you may be, let's say, 100% hard for about 25, 30 minutes, and then about 40% hard for the next 25 minutes or so. I want to know how long it was at its hardest for, and again, the rigidity scale, so how hard it got in that time frame. So how to prepare to give yourself an injection? Well, I have, with Ashton's careful help, procured a sample penis that we're going to talk about and demonstrate this on today. So let's prepare for the injections. We're getting our supplies together. Our supplies include a vial of medication. Men MD medications typically come with a very obvious uh, um, label on the front that tells you what the drug is, uh, when it was manufactured, and how much is in there, right? Like all medications should do, it gives you very detailed information. This, of course, is a sample jar, so it doesn't really count. They also typically have a little metal tin covering over this rubber stopper. It's very important that you take your thumb, pop it under that metal tin, that this little circle right here, and pop it off. Not the whole cap, just this little rubber or metal tin that's above the rubber stopper. I have had guys, unfortunately, go home and try to stick a needle through the metal tin. And of course, the needle busts and they say, that didn't work. And I say, well, did you take the cap off the needle and did you take the cap off the, the bottle? And they go, or the, the tin off the bottle, and they go, oh yeah, I didn't do that. And I bent the needle. So do that. So supplies, one vial, we'll use this syringe to demonstrate. And of course, we have alcohol prep pads. Well, now I'm getting some alcohol supplies out. Okay, perfect. So whatever needle you have, it'll be vaguely similar to this. So follow these instructions, but of course also follow the instructions you get when MedMD sends you your syringes. And if you have questions, call your urologist or call MedMD for future help and support. First thing you do is take the cap off the needle. It's really not that big, guys. It's very, very small needle. It's not scary. It's not frustrating. It's not confusing. It's not concerning. It's a very tiny little needle to supply medication to your penis. It's not that bad at all. Most people tend to use, which I tend to use, uh, a half inch needle or so, uh, and I tend to use various gauges of needle size. The bigger the gauge, the thinner the needle, which is very counterintuitive, but that's how it works. So you take the cap off the needle. What I typically have guys do is pull the plunger back to the indicated dose, which in this case, I'm gonna say the guy needs 0 0.2. So that dose right there, not a whole lot of medication, right? You take the uh, vial and you turn it upside down and you stick the needle into this right there, right there, through the rubber stopper. And then you push the plunger in, so you pressurize the system a little bit, and then you draw back. And when you pressurize, you really limit the amount of air bubbles you get in there. So now we draw back here, and we have a couple of air bubbles, which I'm gonna push out and start from scratch again. And that one is, well, that one's got some bubbles too. I don't like this at all. Hold on, I'm usually much better at this. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. Don't stress me out. Just kidding. All right, we've drawn the medication up to 0 0.2. I got more than I need, so I'm gonna push that extra stuff back in the syringe. I don't need that much. I just need 0 0.2 right there. And then, voila, we have our medication in our syringe. If you have any air bubbles, you can gently tap the syringe like movies, tap like this, tap like this. You wanna get those air bubbles out, and then once they get to the top of that, just kind of push them out so they air comes out. All you have is medication. What I typically do now that I have the medication drawn up is I recap the needle just so I don't accidentally stick myself as I'm getting the needle from my uh, countertop or whatever to my penis. So I'll put the cap back on very carefully so I don't stick myself. This is the cap, this is the safety cap. So when you're done with the needle, this is what you're going to push over there to recap it and seal it off so you don't stick yourself or stick your garbage man when it goes into the garbage. Okay, how to inject the medication? Well, I have, Ashton has procured for me, Mr. Limpy, which is a pretty non-threatening flaccid penis that I can try to demonstrate this stuff on. First of all, what you're gonna do, I need four hands for this, hold on a second here. You're gonna take an alcohol swab, like so, out of its package, doo -doo -doo, and you're gonna clean off the side you're going to inject. In this case, I'm gonna inject the right side because I'm right-handed but you don't inject the same side every time. On Tuesday, you inject the right side. On Thursday, you inject the left side. You clean off over there. 
back to the right side on Saturday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in perpetuity forever and ever. Don't do the same set every time. You want to kind of vary the side from time to time every single time you inject. I typically tell guys to inject between uh, 9 to 11 o'clock or 1 to 3 o'clock within the first inch of the penis. So you take your penis and you or your partner put it on stretch so you get as much of the penis out of you as possible because you want to be within that first inch from where it leaves your body to where it is in the outside world, right? So we're going to get this first inch right there. And I usually say 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock, right? So either here or here, depending on which way the, can the, the clock is facing you. When you inject, and Mr. Limpy does not have any veins, but it, when you're looking at your own penis, you will see little blue superficial surface veins. You want to avoid those. So you put a needle through a little vein in the surface of your skin, it's going to tear, and you're going to have a whole lot more bruising afterwards. So you avoid those by kind of twisting the skin a little bit and rolling it so you get the syringe and the needle to go in in a space that does not have a big vein right there. So then I have uncapped it. So now we have a live needle here. You're going to take it, you're going to inject 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock within the first inch of your penis. So let's say either right here, because I cleaned this side off the alcohol swab, or the next time uh, right here. Hope that makes sense. Let's go back to the right side. We're going to go right side right here. And I typically will have guys put it in and then maybe back it out about a millimeter or so. It all depends on the length of your needle and the girth of your penis. But what you're aiming for, these target areas which are inside your penis on this side, the thing that looks like Mickey Mouse's cartoonish eyes right there, that's what you're aiming for. So you want to get it in the meat of the penis. You don't want to go in at an angle like this or in at an angle like that because you're too superficial. You want to go perpendicular directly in the penis, right in there like so. And you got it in there. It looks pretty good. It's buried in there. You take the plunger and you push it down and you push the medication into the penis. Then you take it off, take it out, excuse me. Once you take it out, the first thing you do is activate your safety so you can put this needle away safely. And then I typically will advise guys to take their penis and just pinch the spot where you injected for about one to three minutes or so to help prevent bleeding. And also, uh, if you have, for example, if you take anticoagulation like aspirin or Plavix or Eliquis or Coumadin to really help get some blood to clot there so you don't have too much bruising and swelling afterwards. So you pinch for about one or three minutes. I'm not going to do this for one or three minutes because that seems kind of silly. We're wasting time. So you've pinched, you're giving yourself the injection, and then the magic happens. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, wait, actually, go back. Stay on the slide for a second, National. Hold on a second. Very, very important. I missed one thing here. Do not inject the top of your penis. Do not inject the bottom of your penis. There are very important things happening in this, these parts of your penis. This area right here, down the length of your penis, is where the nerves and arteries and superficial veins and arteries are on your penis right here, right? So this is very important stuff right here. You don't want to inject into those. It's not very good. It's not very comfortable. It hurts. It's not great. And you don't want to inject the underside because that's where your urethra is. The urethra is the tube that pee comes out of. You don't want to inject here. You don't want to inject here. You want to go, again, one last time, 10 o'clock or two o'clock within the first inch of your penis. Oh, side effects, side effects, side effects. Okay, well, let's go back for a second. So you've given yourself the injection and supposedly the magic is supposed to happen, right? So you get an erection, hopefully within 15, 20 minutes or so, that erection should last you anywhere from a half an hour to two or three hours. And it should be decently hard for that amount of time. If not, you talk to your urologist, so you get an initial sense of what the dose should be, what the strength should be and how much you need. Typically, most urologists will teach you in the office and set the first dose at that time and then kind of go from there. So that's how you help prevent priapism, which again is that bad erection I don't want you to have. So uh, you should also make sure you see a urologist who has some knowledge of how to do this properly, right? Some people haven't done this in a long time or never do it on a regular basis. You want to go to somebody who is a good urologist who has fellowship training in male sexual health, or they don't have fellowship training. They've been doing this for a long time and they're very comfortable doing it. To find those urologists, the best places to look are on the websites for the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, that's smsna.org, or the Society for Urologic Prosthetic Surgeons, which is supsweb.org. SUPS is Society for Urologic Prosthetic Surgeons, S-U-P-S. Okay, so to prevent priapism, we should be giving you the right dosage, and we should test drive it in the office first to make sure that it goes okay. To prevent scar tissue formation, you should really rotate those injection sites and also 
you really you have an inch to work with right for that first inch so you want to not only go you know right side or left side, but also go a little bit forward go a little bit backward but don't do the exact same site every time for the next five or ten years that's not great for scar tissue formation and again only use it uh every other day to really help prevent scar tissue from forming to store this medication you must put it in the fridge it needs to go in the fridge absolutely i mean you take it out of the fridge and you've used it before it's got an open hole in there from where you used it before before you put the needle in there you take another alcohol swab and you use that to clean the top of the bottle off get that rubber stopper nice and clean before you stick your new needle into that right uh there is a beyond use date just like uh, milk or you know beer there's a date by which you really shouldn't use this anymore the date that menmd has on their bottle is a 28 days after first puncture. So it should last you about a month. If refrigerated properly, uh, and if you wipe off the top of an alcohol swab, it may last longer, but MenMD really suggests that you, ex you get rid of the medication after 28 days. That helps prevent gunk from forming in the bottle. So let's say, for example, you don't follow instructions, God forbid, and you leave this on your countertop next to the microwave, uh, and you don't wipe it off between shots. Well, if you do that, you can get germs to form in there. So the reason you keep in the fridge is because it cuts down on the growth of bacteria, which the last thing you want is to pull bacteria out of here and inject that in your penis. So always clean it with an alcohol swab and always put it in the fridge when you're done until it's due to be expired and you throw it away. We have additional accessories that I want to talk to you guys about that you can use. These are very nice, fun things you can get from MenMD that make this whole process much easier and much more fun for everybody. So let's go with uh, what do we got here. Ooh, I'm going to explain all of them. Ashton sent me all of these, which is very exciting, because now I can use them in the office to explain to guys. The insole tote. The insole tote is a very, very useful device. You can help travel with your syringes. The insole tote is insulated with a cold pack that goes in the fridge and also tucks in this little flap right here. Very, very helpful. Very, very useful. Lots of guys ask me, can I travel with these drugs? I say, yes, absolutely. Put them in the insole tote and either put them in your carry-on or put them in your check-in luggage. As long as they're in a, a contained container that is cool, you put them in the fridge when you get to the hotel or you get to grandma's house, wherever you're going, and that stays nice and cool and safe in there. So this is very helpful. It's got lots of room to stick, for example, your vial of medication, your syringes, and if you have one, your uh, um, auto injector right here. Speaking of auto injectors, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, auto injectors come in this awesome package and have a variety of different sizes and lengths depending on what needle you have. So for example, they come with, depending on the length of your syringe, they come with different sized caps that go on the end, which I have right here. So for example, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> this is the piece that goes along for somebody who uses a half milliliter syringe. This one is for the people who use a one milliliter syringe, and this one is for the people who use a 0 0.3 milliliter syringe. I got to be honest with you. I am plus minus on auto injectors, and I don't mean this to say that you shouldn't buy one. What I mean by that is I was trained 20 years ago now to give injections a certain way, and that way is to draw the medication up and stick it in the penis. That's what I do. I do it multiple times a day for my patients. I love doing it. But that's all I know. I'm a simple man and I'm not very smart, right? So to me, an auto injector is an additional step in the process that confuses me because I'm not a sharp guy. Uh, so for many patients, however, my patients have all who got an injector, auto injector tell me that they love it because it makes it much easier for them. For me, as a guy familiar with only doing this, draw back, push in, draw back, push in. To me, this seems like an extra step I don't need. But for patients, they love it. It comes with a very detailed set of instructions that tells you how to use it. But essentially the principle is you uncap this clear plastic cap, you pull back this mechanism, you insert the whole needle in there, of course, removing the plunger, which you need to have activated right here. So you pull back on this, you insert that in there. And then you push down like this to get the needle exposed. So you take the cap off. And then you re-cock it again, like so. You push this button again, and wait, check this out, it's pretty neat. Pew! 
You got a little auto injector. So you lay this against the penis skin like so. And then you don't see the needle. You're not anything to worry about. You just jam it in there. Needle goes in and then voila. I found over the years that the people who like auto injectors the most are people who are least familiar with using needles and who are most uncomfortable using needles. So they want to camouflage the process by putting the needle in an auto injector. Diabetics, for example, who have been injecting insulin for many, many years have no problem feeling comfortable with injecting themselves with a, with a standard syringe and a needle on it. But patients who are less familiar with this process and who don't love needles, I don't see why you would or would not, depends on the guy, but who don't love needles, love auto injectors because it disguises the needle from you uh, and makes the process much less intimidating and scary. So by all means, if you feel like you want to try one, try one. They're very, very useful. They're also cheap and easy from, to get from NMD. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you toss it, but whatever. I mean, they work pretty well for a lot of guys. They also sell the Insul Ease syringe uh, magnifier, excuse me, which of course makes sense. As we talked about, these syringes have tiny little numbers printed on them. These numbers are not super clear, right? So the Insul Ease magnifies these numbers so you can really see exactly how much you're putting in there, which I want you to know. So by all means, the Insul Ease, very, very helpful. And then last but not least, ManMD sells these sharps containers, which is very, very important. I like this idea very much. I don't want you sticking an uncapped needle in your garbage bag for your, your garbage man to uh, hit himself with. That's not fun or great. You don't want to do that. You don't want to endanger your garbage collector. So you put your used needles in this sharps container, which has multiple openings. You just drop it in there like so. It's idiot proof, right? You can't screw this up. And you put the caps on like this, and then you have it for later. And then when it's all full, uh, you dispose of it in the appropriate fashion. But you can just, I think, just toss this, honestly, and it's relatively safe. And you're not going to inject anybody accidentally. You're not going to cause any problems. You're not going to have any issues. It really works great. The reason I use MenMD and why I'm committed to using MenMD is because, not just because I'm doing this webinar uh, and, and I enjoy the, their company, but more specifically because they provide excellent customer service and have detailed uh, opportunities to speak to people who can help you walk you through this process. They have great videos online. Um, their customer service arm is, is beyond compare. It's a top flight operation. They really have excellent customer service. They can help walk you through this process. The website, if you're web savvy, can really give you tons of information you might want to use. Um, you can also uh, call their number and respect, uh, request a, a personal health assistant who can really walk you through this process and make it easy. And, and so not just the medical help, but also the um, patient facing side, the people who are the staff who help you get your medications ordered and prescribed and send messages to me to remind me to send you refills. Those folks are great. I mean, they really do a wonderful bang up job of making sure that you get the care and the help that you need. So I am biased because I like MenMD uh, and I've been with them the entire my entire career, but I think they provide really good customer service you just don't get from other compound pharmacies. Ladies and gentlemen, I have in my hot little hands here, uh, four pages of questions I'm gonna answer for you. So I'm gonna go through these one by one. Some of these are directed uh, uh, specifically at the patient who asked the question. And I gotta emphasize one more time, this is not free medical advice, right? So this is what I'm telling you here are broad recommendations about how to use injections and stuff like that. But if I tell you that I think you should see your doctor, I think you should see your doctor and talk to them about that. Okay. What product has a similar effectiveness to injections? And the answer is nothing. That's why this is here, right? So we have the three drugs, Viagra, and Cialis, which provide the bulk of erectile dysfunction care. And there comes a time in every man's life when those drugs stop working because those drugs are dependent on your erection quality, right? So they make your penis about 40% harder. This is Viagra, and Cialis, make you 40% harder. But when your baseline erection is at a point where that's not good enough anymore, then you need something stronger. And those options are the use of a vacuum device, which we talked about a couple of months ago at our last seminar, which worked great for a lot of guys. Injections, which are phenomenal, work great for guys. Uh, and penile implant surgery, which is not the purpose of this form, which I'm happy to talk to you guys about at, uh, in clinic. So there are also, Previously on the market were suppositories that you, you insert in your urethra 
to give you an erection. The brand name for this uh, was Muse. I'm not sure if it's on the market or not. ManMD also offers a gel you can insert in your urethra as well. And those work very well for a lot of patients. I have not found great success in guys getting the erection they want with those uh, medications. So if really, if you want a turbocharged, phenomenal, rigid, satisfying erection that provides you with the same sensation and orgasm and ejaculation, injections are it. Number two, Viagra doesn't work. I've tried injections to no avail. What will work given that I've had diabetes for over 35 years? So we talked about diabetics a lot during this talk today. Uh, and the reason that diabetics have erectile dysfunction is because diabetes is a disease that affects small blood vessels, right? So your fingertips, your eyes, your toes, things like that. Organs that have an, uh, one artery going into them and then no backup supply. And your penis is exactly the same thing. It has two paired arteries that are very thin and delicate. And when you have diabetes for a long time, those arteries get damaged as time goes by and you're not able to supply adequate blood flow to your penis. So to this gentleman who's asked this question, what I would say is Viagra doesn't work. Okay. Baseline point about that, if Viagra doesn't work, then Cialis and Levitra are also not gonna work. They're pretty much the same drug, just packaged in three different ways. So Viagra doesn't work, I've tried injections, no avail. My first question is, have you gone to somebody who knows how to do injections properly? That is vitally important. Uh, and to find those, pay, those physicians, those urologists, you go to smsna.org and find somebody who knows what they're doing. But if all those fails and injections don't work for you anymore, or never worked in the past, penile implant surgery is a very reasonable way to solve this problem if you are a candidate for that surgery. Okay, injection therapy specific questions. I love these, these are really good questions, very thoughtful questions by, on your guys' part. I'm, I'm looking forward to answering these. We have a lot of them though. Are injections painful? There's a great study about two years ago done by Greg Broderick uh, at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. He gave patients a questionnaire on how much pain they anticipated prior to the injection, and then another questionnaire that said, on a scale of one to 10, how much pain did you feel with the injection? Patients anticipated six out of 10 pain. Patients felt 1.2 out of 10 pain, uh, which is five times less than what they anticipated, right? So these injections are not painful at all. It feels like a little tiny poke. I poke multiple guys a day all the time, and at most I get a flinch, and that's it. Uh, it's very, very minor, little tiny needle. The needles, again, are in different gauges. Uh, the gauges range from usually 27 to 31, which are increasingly tiny needles as you get there. So little tiny needles, not very long needles. This is not what you get for your tetanus shot or you get for your flu shot. These are little, little tiny needles to inject small amounts of medication. They are very comfortable, they're very easy to use, and they're not very painful. How does the Inject Ease device work? Well, we covered that, and it's also very clearly in the instructions. So if you get one, do not be intimidated by these instructions. They're actually very, very clear cut and make a ton of sense and work very well to help patients get where they need to go. Does the procedure become less effective with continued use? Uh, yes. It, dude, the long and short of it is that over time, the injections get less and less effective for guys because the injections aren't solving the problem. The erectile dysfunction progresses as time goes by. As your penis gets worse and worse and worse, the injections become less and less effective. That being said, guys can man these drugs ranging anywhere from one to 10 years, right? I've had guys in this for at least a decade and they love it and they still work well even after all that time. As time goes by, you will need to use higher and higher strengths, but you can be on these drugs for many, many years. Let me clarify one thing, dosage versus strength. Dosage is how much is in this syringe. So how much you put into your penis, that is the dose. And typically the dose controls the duration of how long it lasts. Strength is, where's my vial of Medicaid? Oh, here it is. Strength is what comes in this bottle. We talked about the various strengths of Trimix we had very early on in this lecture. Uh, and strength is what's in here, not how much you put in, that is dose. So very different concepts. And so when you're talking to your urologist and you wanna say, I wanna go up on this, it's not quite hard enough. You say, I wanna increase my strength. Not I want to increase my dose, right? Because if you tried multiple doses, nothing's working, then the strength is the next step up for you. That's what you want to do next. Number four, I know injection isn't additive, but can it be habit forming? No, this is not heroin. Uh, this is something that you choose to do when you want to have sex. 
Uh, it is not something you become dependent on. It is something that works for your penis, uh, but not something that you feel like you're obligated to do or anything like that. If you don't like it, you stop doing it, right? It's not a thing that you're committed to. If you like it, you stay on it for years and you like it and it works very well. No matter how much I inject, my penis only gets 50% hard. If I inject too much, my head hurts so bad that I can't enjoy it. Sir, this is a very important question that you should direct to the urologist who prescribed this medication to you, no question. If you're saying you only get 50% hard, no matter how much dose you put in, then perhaps your strength needs to be increased, right? That's very important. Um, and the side effects you're describing about your head hurting that you can't enjoy it, I hope you mean, or I assume you mean the head of your penis, because some people have pain in their penis with this, but typically your head should not be influenced by these medications. These are locally acting drugs. They act on this. They don't go throughout the whole rest of your body and cause anything else to happen. So if you're having head pain while you're having sex in your skull, you got to talk to your doctor, no question. If you're having penis pain, you got to talk to your urologist who prescribed these medications who can find a combination of trimix or bimix or whatever that works for you and does not give you pain, which is very easy to do. That's why we have so many of these drugs to choose from. All right, I got to stay on time here. How does quad mix, oh, I'm sorry, have there been any studies of the long-term side effects of injection therapy? No, unfortunately, there are few studies about the long-term effects of these drugs. Um, but there are many studies that talk about patient and partner satisfaction over time, which is very important, right? So the satisfaction studies show that people are very satisfied with these drugs. There's not a lot of, you know, basic science research into what happens in your penis, but we generally know what happens. As time goes by, the erectile dysfunction gets worse no matter what we're doing to augment that blood flow in your penis and scar tissue forms, which can also potentially make the drugs less effective over time. These are well-known things. Um, and, you know, these are part of the process of injection therapy, but it is what it is. How does quad mix differ from other injectable medications? Again, you add atropine to that drug. Atropine is another drug that helps in a similar fashion to the other drugs, but in a little bit of a different way get more blood flow in your penis. Very, very useful. So quad mix is trimix plus atropine. How often should, in, should injection therapy be performed in a given week? I talked about this earlier. I would say every other day. So four times a week at max. Three to four times a week is typically the standard what you want to be doing. Does anxiety negate the effects of injection therapy? No, no, does not. Uh, these drugs are very strong. This is the equivalent of, let's say Viagra is gasoline, this is kerosene, like rocket fuel, right, or, or jet fuel. So no matter how tense you are about this process, your brain and the anxiety you feel in your brain will not uh, cause these drugs to not work. With Viagra, that's a distinct possibility, but with injection medications, these are orders of magnitude stronger than oral medications. And so you're very unlikely to have a problem where you get nervous and uh, the drugs don't work as a result. Now, if you get nervous, you don't inject yourself, right? That's a different story. That's not what we're talking about here. What can be done for overdosage? It is pretty painful and it took several hours for it to subside. Talk to your urologist, no question. Your strength needs to come down. Your dose needs to come down. Uh, and of course, as I said, if you have a private episode or you have a prolonged erection that won't go away, go to the emergency room. That's very important as well. And also when you get back to the emergency room, you send a message to your doctor that same night so he knows the next morning or she knows the next morning uh, this problem is occurring and he needs to or she needs to contact you to get this process uh, improved for you. Can any of these techniques be used if the patient has periodic bouts with AFib? Yes, absolutely. And even if you take anticoagulation for your AFib, these drugs are safe to use anticoagulation, your anticoagulation, excuse me, you're just going to have more bruising than the average guy, but absolutely. These drugs, again, are locally acting on your penis, your penis. They're not systemically acting on your whole body. So they're not going to throw you into AFib or cause any problems like that. However, you may go into AFib if you're having sex. That's a different story, not related to the drug. The shots work for me now, but with stage four Parkinson's, how long should I expect them to last? Well, the Parkinson's is not really going to change the blood flow inside your penis or the dynamics of your erection and how these drugs work for you. Parkinson's is going to affect your ability to be able to successfully inject yourself. If you have a partner who can help you with that process, that makes that a whole lot easier. So don't expect the Parkinson's to make your erectile dysfunction worse. That happens to all guys as they age anyway. This, even with Parkinson's, should be feasible as long as somebody else can give you a hand getting the medication into your penis. 
What is the maximum dosage of Trimix? This is a different question than the maximum strength. The maximum strength we talked about is Quad Mix 2, which is double dose of Trimix number 16 plus atropine as well. That is the strength that is the maximum. The dose that's the maximum really depends on what your prescriber feels is appropriate. I tend to stop guys at 40 or 50 units, which is about a half a syringe or so. Because at that point, if you get a five milliliter ball of medication and you're injecting a half milliliter every time, you're using up that ball in 10 injections. I wanna keep you within about 20 to 30 units so you can get hopefully about 25 shots out of that bottle. 25 shots in the course of the, a few months of the medication being good is roughly sex a lot more often than uh, 10 shots in a bottle, which is not nearly as much sex. I hope that makes sense. Okay, what are the chances of infection with this method? Very, very slim if you follow the instructions. You wipe off the alcohol on your, you wipe the alcohol on your penis, excuse me, your penis, you wipe off the top of the bottle with an alcohol swab, and you refrigerate the medication. That makes the infection risk very, 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 very low. Why am I getting a headache, head rush after injection and a height of excitement, but not hard to penetrate? Again, this is a similar question to the previous one. The gentleman who asked this question needs to see his urologist to ask these questions to them specifically and figure this out. But there should not be a head rush associated with these drugs. That is very unusual. I've never seen that in all these years of doing this. Please discuss the formation of scar tissue at injection sites and how it affects treatment. Well, scar tissue can make it difficult for the needle to go into your penis. Scar tissue also makes the medication less effective because, again, tissue inside your penis you're injecting is supposed to be spongy to take blood up and expand properly. And as the erectile dysfunction progresses, because the artery is not working as well anymore, and you've also been using injections for a long time, scar tissue may form that makes the injections less effective in expanding those uh, spongy tissues to give you an erection. This is just what happens. Um, as long as you use it appropriately, you really make that process as long of a process as you possibly can. Can injection therapy lessen one's ability to reach orgasm? Yes, in some guys. I probably have a guy every two or three months that comes in and says, the injections work great, I have a magnificent erection, but unfortunately I can't quite get to orgasm about 20% of the time or so. And that is because the brain and the penis work together to facilitate having an orgasm. When the brain is getting signals that say, we're enjoying this, we wanna have an orgasm, but the penis is saying, I can't shut down right now because I have tons of blood coming into me and I can't turn myself off. That can make it a little difficult for that process to happen. But for the most part, if you're within a safe range, that's giving a good enough erection to be able to use, orgasm should be feasible. But again, talk to your urologist. I have a diagnosis of venous leak and Trimix didn't work. Is it likely that quad mix would work? You're welcome to try. I am doubtful that that will be the case. Venous leak erectile dysfunction, for clarification, there are two different types of ED. Oh, blood in the penis, which is arteriogenic, and a hard time keeping the blood in the penis, which is venous leak. Venous leak guys do not respond all that well to injections. Unfortunately, venous leak guys tend to be guys who had prostate cancer treatment, so either radiation or surgery, and they just don't do as well with injections as other guys do. Uh, you can increase the strength all you want, but it doesn't always work uh, for guys in those boats. But I, again, encourage you to talk to your urologist and see if they can find something to help. I have been using Trimix for the last five years, but I need more dosage to have the same effect as time goes by. Probably higher strength, not higher dosage. Uh, and yes, that happens to everybody. As the, as the process of erectile dysfunction progresses, you'll need higher and higher strengths. I'm about to try the max dosage, hoping for a hard erection. If it doesn't work, should I give up? No, absolutely you should talk to your urologist to prescribe these medications and talk about your options as far as medications, if there are any further options for you, or surgery, or a vacuum device. There's still plenty of options. People should always have hope of this process. You should always have hope when you leave your urologist's office that there is an option to fix your penis. No question. That's what I, I try to give guys every day. Okay. Can you use Cialis along with Quadmix? Do not, do not mix and match oral drugs and Trimix at the same time. Do not. There are very different mechanisms for giving you an erection, and you could potentially give yourself a priapism, which is that runaway erection that won't go away. Do not mix and match. Question number two, 
Can injection therapy be combined with a vacuum device? And if so, in what order? I would suggest injection first, suck the blood in with the vacuum device, put the ring on, and go from there. Is there a medical contraindication to using the injection in pills? Yes. Do not, do not do that, please. Under any circumstances, I don't know if you guys can hear me or not because I'm talking basically in my office right now, but please do not mix and match oral drugs and trimix or bimix or anything. Big no-no, please don't do it. Can you use injections one day and a, and a oral medication the next day? That's fine. Injection, Sunday, pill, uh, the next day, as long as that pill is a short-acting drug like Viagra or Levitra. Cialis stays in your system for a couple days, so don't do that. Can men have sex after taking Lupron for one year, four years ago? I am 74 years old. Sir, absolutely. I encourage you to find your local sexual medicine expert uh, and, and they will talk to you about that process, but there are all kinds of options for you. And I want you to have sex again, sir. So please, by all means, find somebody who can help you. If, it, you're, if you're in New England, I don't care how far away from you. I don't care if you're in Connecticut, Maine, uh, Vermont, come see me. I'm happy to help. I get guys from all over New England and I, I'm, I wake every, up every day to get everyone's penis as hard as I possibly can. So come see me if you can. If not, find your local person who is also excellent. These would be the best location and technique for successful injection every time. I will say this again. 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock within the first inch of your penis from your body. Don't go all the way down here. It doesn't make any sense. First inch from your body, 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock. I get a lot of bruising. Does the auto-inject cause more bruising than manual injection? I have no idea. I will frankly admit that. I don't know. If you're getting a lot of bruising, I suspect you might be on anticoagulation, which may cause that bruising. Again, the best way to relieve bruising or prevent bruising is to put pressure on the site of injection for about a minute or two or three after you inject yourself. But I would also ask this to your urologist as well because he may have other or she may have other opinions on this matter. If a first injection does not produce an erection, is it okay to inject another dose? No, no. If you don't get an injection, if you don't get an erection after your first injection, you just may have missed. People miss all the time. If you miss, you stop what you're doing. You cancel your sexy plans for that evening and you start again the next day, but don't try again that night. Don't give yourself 10 units. That didn't work. You go to this side, give yourself another 10 units. <clears throat> Please don't do that. Stop what you're doing, abort the mission, and come back the next day and try again. Again, when I first have guys some injections, I expect them to fail about 50% of the time because they need to familiarize yourself with how to make this process work better. With practice comes better results. So by all means, Practice, 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 but don't practice the same night. Please show where on the penis the injection may be inserted, in particular, how far forward back to top center. I think I covered this one again. I'm happy to do that if we need to, but I covered that one a couple times. When I would, oh, I like this one, this is very important. When I withdraw the syringe from the penis, often the needle is bent, sometimes preventing successful injection. Why is this happening? Two potential reasons. One, you may have scar tissue from Peyronie's disease, which is gonna cause that like a, a shell of scar tissue in your penis that may make that be a problem, but more likely your needle gauge is too high. So you're probably using a 31 or a 29 gauge, which are very, very dainty, delicate needles. They may bend when you put them in. So drop down to a gauge that is more girthy. And that bigger gauge, like a 27, I use 27 on guys all the time. 27 or 29. I love those needles because they never bend. You put them in. You take them out and it's a straight needle every time. 31s can bend because they're much more delicate. If uncircumcised, could excess skin be pulled forward or back when injecting? If you're uncircumcised, I suggest you grab the head of your penis and pull it from your body like this. You won't be this stretchy, obviously. That's, this is a, a demo device, but you pull it out or have your partner pull it out so you can get the whole penis exposed because with the foreskin, it may be a little bit Mm, challenging to figure out exactly where the base of the penis is. Why is it harder to get the injection therapy to work on my left side than my right side? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you may have a bad artery on one side and the other artery is working perfectly fine. I try to figure this out in my practice. So I, I do an ultrasound on guys to figure out exactly how to get the injections to work best for them. Not everybody does that, but if, uh, if you're having concerns about that, talk to your urologist and see what they think. Is it okay to inject in the scar tissue? As long as you get the needle in, it does not bend, it should be fine. But I would try to avoid scar tissue and you avoid it from forming by alternating and rotating your injection sites. 
What is the correct way to inject the flaccid penis? I feel like we've covered that a bunch. I'm going to skip that one. How to inject the correct area away from blood vessels when the stomach blocks your view? If you have a big belly, such as I do, a rather large tummy, you can't see it right now, which is fine. You have to have some help. So you can either inject in front of a needle, so you can really use one hand to pull your belly up, one hand to pull the knee penis out, and then one hand to inject. Or you also have somebody help you, right? So you have uh, your partner you're having sex with give you a hand with this uh, this whole option. That's the best way to do it. Either use a mirror by yourself or have your partner give you a hand. Sometimes after injection of the 40 milliliters, I do not get an erection, and also there is a bubble under my penis skin. Why is that? Because you did not inject into your penis. You injected, as I said uh, in the other demonstration, at a weird angle. So you injected subcutaneously, which is Latin for under the skin. You don't want to do that. You want to get perpendicular. So you want to go in at a right angle and put it into the meat of the penis and then inject. If you go like this, you're going to get a weird bubble and the medicine's not going in the chamber you want to go in. A couple, four more questions. Is it safe to use the medicine after its expiration? Um, I'm gonna go on this one with, you should follow men and these instructions. If you're my patient, I will tell you that these drugs are probably good if properly cared for and left in the fridge and, and properly wiped off an alcohol swab for three months. But this is men MD's show, and 28 days is probably a good idea. I know the medicine has to be refrigerated, but I've heard you should let it go to room temperature before injecting. Is this true? Yeah, I don't know where you heard that from. You can draw it out of the bottle straight from the fridge. It should be perfectly fine. Um, some people, this may be where you heard it from. Some people use a different compound pharmacy that has frozen medications, and so they have to let it thaw before they inject in their penis. And that makes sense, obviously, but this is not the case with MedMD. They have much simpler uh, medication. Can the fluid be frozen or is that not advisable? No, don't do that. Just take it out of the fridge, liquid form. Don't freeze it. There's no reason to freeze it. Can you freeze unused vials so they don't lose potency? Again, same thing. Uh, you don't want to leave it in the fridge for too long anyway. Um, just because over time it does degrade the medication. It doesn't really work as well. So if you don't use it and it's been six months or a new batch and then schedule sex for, you know, however long it takes for it to get shipped to your house. Alrighty, thank you, Dr. Gross, for answering all those wonderful questions. We're just going to go ahead and share a few closing remarks. So, if you'd like to learn more about the injection therapy that was discussed today, you do have a few options. There are also more resources in the Resource Center on menmd.com. You can visit this page to view instructional videos, guides, expert articles, and more. You can also call MenMD at 857 233 5837 or log into the MenMD portal to schedule an appointment with a MenMD personal health assistant. If you're interested in any of the injections, accessories, or tools that were mentioned tonight, you can learn more or purchase those on the shop page of menmd.com. If you found this video helpful and want to stay in the loop with our growing men's health community, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when new content is available. Your support makes it easier for other men like you to find these helpful resources. Thanks again for watching. We hope to see you again.